Before we do this theorem, we're going to go over what um, upper and lower contour sets are. So let's say that we have a function of two variables given by x squared plus y squared. If we make this function either bigger or equal to a number or smaller or equal to, num to a number, that's going to give us the upper and lower um, contour sets. So for example, x squared plus y squared bigger or equal to 9. Graphically, that would be a circle, and that would be in uh, everything shaded outside of the circle. While if you took x squared plus y squared smaller or equal to 9, that would be everything inside a circle. So notice how the first one will not be convex, because to be convex, every segment that you take between two points in the set has to belong to the to the set, which it doesn't because it crosses the, the empty part. But here, every two points that you take, if you draw a segment, the line will always be in the set. So here we have um, an upper contour set that is not convex. And here we have a lower contour set, which is convex. And this function here, the two variable function, would be a three dimensional graph. It would essentially be like a parabola, which would be convex. So the theorem just says that in general, if you have a function that's convex like this one, the lower contour set, so for example, this one x squared plus y squared is smaller or equal to 9, is going to be convex. If instead you have a concave function, then the um, upper contour sets are going to be convex instead. So for the theorem, just to write it out properly, we say that we have a function with the domain that we call C, that is a subset of R2. The reason we use C here and not the usual A is just because this has to specifically be a convex set. Meaning that if you're talking about R1, that's an interval. And if we're talking about R2 or more, as we saw here, it has to be something where if you draw a segment, the line always has to be in the set. So if the function um, has a convex set and the function itself is um, convex, then we can say that all the lower contour sets are going to be convex. And if instead the function is um, concave, then the upper contour sets would be convex. So we're going to prove the first one. Um, the other one you could prove the same kind of way though. Um, so we'll see what the difference is after. So in order to do this, we're going to use the definition of um, convex uh, functions and also convex sets. So if we start off knowing that the function is convex, we can write out, the, write out the definition of convex, which is essentially that if you draw a line between two points on your function, the points on the line uh, so the images, are always going to be greater or equal to the points on the function. So formally, if we use the definition of convex with um, linear combinations, that's saying that f of alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha x1, this would represent the point on the function, is smaller or equal to the point on the segment. So this would be assuming that our set is not empty. So if it's not equal to the empty set. Now, if we know that um, we're looking at the lower contour sets, 
that means that we're making our function smaller or equal to k. And so that implies that this here is smaller or equal to k. And then this one as well. So if we replace k in there, we end up with alpha times k plus 1 minus alpha times k, which if you simplify is just going to give you k, because you get alpha k plus 1k minus alpha k. So the alpha k's cancel out, and you're left with k. So since we had a smaller or equal to sign, and these were also smaller or equal to, then the whole thing here is going to be smaller or equal to. So since we know that the, um, the value of the function, which essentially would be the z value if we're talking about a two variable function, if that value is, um, is smaller or equal to k, that means that it satisfies the inequality. And so the point is, um, is in the set. And so that also means that the corresponding x value, which is just alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha x2, definitely belongs to the lower uh, contour set, which was um, f smaller or equal to k. And so since this is actually just a definition of, um, of convexity for sets, then this implies that our lower contour set, f smaller or equal to k, must be convex. So just uh, one little thing that I should have mentioned earlier is that here we're assuming that x1 and x2 are in the set to begin with. And also alpha is a real number, which is in the interval 0 to 1. And one last thing, uh, if the set had, um, had been empty, an empty set is considered um, convex by definition, so that one you don't actually have to explain.